Welcome to Parsec Passion Live, a podcast about Star Wars TV shows on Disney Plus. <sighs> this week we're talking about The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 7, Chapter 23, The Spies. AKA Peace Out, Paz. Survivors come out of hidings. My name's Bubba, and with me as always, it's Catfish. Yeah, Bubba, here we are in person, bringing it live for the people. <laughs> Live on tape. Catfish. Talk to me. I don't think we can wait any longer talking about this episode because it exploded in the Mando fan community. What is your rating out of 10 for Chapter 23, The Spies? Bo, I'm going to give this what I like to call nine triple Bs out of 10. Oh, my goodness. Nine out of 10 triple... Wait, triple Bs? Yes. Badass Beskar Battles, Bubba. (laughs) It should have been quadruple Bs. Badass Beskar Battles, Bubba. This was amazing. Oh, I love it. We got Moff looking badass. I mean, he looks so good. Oh, yes. And he knows it. He he knows it. He knows it. He knows he is repping. We got another setback for the Mandalorian. Mandalorians as a oh, group, yeah. and our Mandalorian in particular. Ouch. Grogu's got a new new mode of transportation. Gold. And he's improved his communication skills by two whole <laughs> words, Bubba. <laughs> um, this was a fun one. I, I really... I, the, the only thing I can say about it is I wish it had happened earlier in the season, Bubba. I cannot believe that this is it. We're just set up for one more season and it's kind of kind of be a cliffhanger because I feel like we've been just moping around a little bit and, and, and we're going to get one more episode before we have to wait a long time for more. We do. It's going to be two years. I haven't started filming season four yet. They've written it. They wrote it with season three together. They wanted to know where they were going. Okay. I like but, that. Uh, and it's going to film later this year, 2023. But that is exciting. Nine out of ten. Happy you're excited. Now, Bubba, before we get your rating, yeah, I was just say the, the way you say that makes me wonder because you know a lot of shows I've been upset with because they sort of plan it all out. Yeah, we talked about the mm-hmm. specifically Penny Dreadful City of Angels, and so what happened was no, seriously, no, I that was the one where. They had such a long plan that they decided to sort of like really slow play it in the first season. And as a result, that was the only season. So maybe that's why this is felt a little untethered because instead of saying we're going to have one, we're going to really focus on something big, they did a two-season arc. So that's interesting to me, Bubba. But what's more interesting to me. Much more interesting. Is what your rating is for this episode. That's exactly right. So you went nine out of ten. Very high. I did. We have huge fan responses, so much feedback. I mean, we're going to talk forever reading your great feedback, listeners. We love it so much. Thank you. I am going to be the outlier. Okay. Because I'm only going to give this episode nine R2-D2s out of (laughs) ten. Wait a second. Yeah. R, I can't wait for this. R2-D2s? Well... Yes. R2-D2, my favorite character in the original trilogy. When I was a little kid, R2-D2 was my favorite character. Got it. But here on The Mandalorian, R2-D2 stands for something really different. Uh Uh-huh. I can't wait for this. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. I forgot what the first R was. Hold on. (laughs) Hold on. Um... Uh huh. This is okay. This, is live. this wasn't the original R, but let's just say <laughs> okay, this. Why not? Uh-huh. So R two D two on the Mandalorian, right? Starts for ridiculous Ragnar, dad dead. <laughs> Ragnar's dad is dead. R I P Pass Fizzla. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous, Ragnar. You got eaten by a space alien for a day. Your dad rescued you a day later. And now your dad, Paz Vizsla, is dead. Well, what was Ragnar when, when Paz needed him? Right. Exactly. It seemed like a very unequal no, relationship. No. He did, Ragnar heard, heard, oh my goodness, my dad's trapped outside the blast doors with all these new Beskar troopers attacking him. First... Let me let me have a campfire and talk to my friends, <laughs> and then I'll rescue him and pay back for Ragnar. So nine out of ten, Catfish. Wow, this was great. I am going to ding it in the most minor of ways. Tell me why. For an episode titled "The Spies," and I'm pretty sure we have one confirmed spy in Elia Kane, who we've known has been a, a double agent or whatever we call her right. there on Coruscant. But spies, plural, huh? This whole episode, I was like, ooh, who are they going to reveal? Who's the other spy? Who are they going to reveal? 
And I'm pretty sure they did, unless I'm missing something, they didn't reveal another spy. <laughs> unless unless Paz was a triple agent. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never suspect me dying here to defend them. They really did set up. You know, first I thought, uh, hello, guys, spoiler alert, don't tell us about more spies. I know. But you know what? Also, don't tease us. There was no spies. The whole episode, I was waiting for a reveal of who the other spy was. I loved the episode, but I'm going to ding it at least one point. I thought the thing was going to come down and Paz was going to be like, boom. But at this point, Bubba, I I would have a hard time... (laughs) figuring out who the spy was and we'll talk about this a little bit later but if there's a spy among this group this is a really long con (laughs) that's going on really is now listeners we always say who cares what we think we want to know what you think and we have mentioned it already because last week's episode had a very mixed reaction from the Star Wars community and from you guys, our listeners, we have so much feedback on last week's podcast, but we also have a lot of feedback on this week's podcast. And I believe almost all of it, I'm saying almost all of it is going to be positive. We put out a poll. Admittedly, we only put this poll out on our Twitter handle saying, hey, how did you guys feel? Did you feel yes, 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 yes about the episode or did you feel no, 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 no. And so that far... That was it? There was no middle response? Did no. you feel meh, meh, <laughs> meh, meh? <laughs> Until Grogu gets that button. We didn't yeah. have that. Okay, got it. Only 73 votes after a day. Oh, no, that's a good number of votes. Pretty good number of votes on our Twitter account. And of those 73, 93% said yes, 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 I yes. I love so it. They love it. I so, love it. So we can't wait, get, wait till your feedback. But if you're listening to this, you can still give us feedback down on YouTube. You can still tweet us at double. PHQ, the word double, the single letter P for podcast, HQ for headquarters, at double PHQ on Twitter, Instagram, and, and Bubba, I didn't know if you were aware of this or not, yeah. but you can reach out to us at facebook.com backslash double PHQ. It's Wait, as what? simple as that. That's all it Facebook. is? Facebook.com backslash double PHQ. P- this feels H-Q. like the first time I'm hearing this. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it, but that's yeah. why I wanted to say it twice. Okay. Now, Catfish, do we want to... Talk to me. Uh, do we want to dive into this episode? We're both 9 on 10 on, so, so <laughs> high on. Or do we want to talk about all the huge news that has happened in the last week? What do you Bubba, think? I'm so excited to get into this, and usually we do the news next. I say we, we save the news for the people, uh, the, the, the people, the creme de la creme. Okay. At the end. All right, yeah, Let's sure. do it, because there well, is a, a lot idea. of news to talk about. There is a lot of news. Let's get into this episode. Holy cow. Listeners, it begins with the one spy. Unless the probe droid that she talks to is the second spy, but it's Elia Kane. She she's in the underbelly of Coruscant, known as the Blade Runner district. Of town. <laughs> absolutely, it's absolutely. She was wearing absolutely. a Blade Runner trench coat. <laughs> Catfish. Spoilers for Blade Runner. Decker wears a trench coat like that. It's raining. I, I put in the show notes, how is one big planet covered by an entire city without like a major body of water? How does it rain there? What's going on? There's a there's a very close moon nearby that's made entirely of water. <laughs> right, and so it goes over there. So this probe droid, we first saw these probe droids back in 1980 oh, in The Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. It comes down, scans her face. She is TK... 2755. That's for all our listeners in the UK who are fans of TK Maxx there. <laughs> Great. And it's a hologram. She's having a discussion of a hologram with Moff Gideon. We Holy knew he cow. escaped. We knew he there were some best guard traces left when he escaped. And so he is being, you know, they're like, what's going on? We find out the pirates. The pirates that attacked Navarro were part of Gideon's plan to cause disruptions. It's an awesome plan. It's an awesome plan. Just like in on on Andor, the idea of making all these all you don't want to attack directly or seem like a right. big group, so you you do all these things that make it seem like they're kind of random non-connected occurrence and keep keep the new republic busy wait we got pirates here we got this here yeah so they don't focus on you in your new plans but it, he but alia kane knows the truth she's like no it's not the new republic that fought the pirates it was the bo katan helmet off crew and the helmet on crew worked together to defeat him Moff Gideon's like, no, well, no, 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 no. They're, they're sworn enemies. That's impossible, Catfish. Well, it looks like we got a double M on our hands. A double M? Yeah. 
miffed moff oh man the fact that moff is in this episode we got a triple him miffed matt murdoch <laughs> no bubba i yeah. i well I, matt murdoch has to be happy now yeah, we'll talk about him later but listen i love just the, the little things that i noticed here showing the power play so first of all when uh, when she is seeing Moff, Moff is full size, and maybe I think he would adjust himself to oh, like, yeah. let me bump myself up to 120% size, right? <laughs> of course. And then we go to see her, and 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 in a, in a very subtle illusion, he's in the palm of her hand, and yeah. she's small sized. She is a pawn, and he is the big dude. I love it. I would do that too. I do that on our we're on our normal podcast when we're not in the same room, as I make myself just that much bigger in the YouTube comments and so then okay so you know all this time we know Moff Gideon wanted Grogu we we know he's got some sort of cloning hang up but what is his big what is his deal and finally here near the end of season three Gideon has a meeting of the minds of the Shadow Council he walks mm-hmm. through these shield walls like it's the opening of the old sitcom Get Smart he he goes into a room of holograms with other Imperials. And what I love about this, Bubba, is they're already chatting. Moff shows up late. Quiet, quitting again. <laughs> He's like, you guys can discuss whatever you want. Nothing happens until I show up. Now, the, in some ways, this Shadow Council of the Imperial Remnant, mm-hmm. the people still trying to fight for the Empire, they're doing great. Because a lot of systems are getting sick of new rules and regulation. Why do I have to pay taxes to the new republic? You know, some people don't like that. But they are also fighting amongst themselves. What did you think of the Shadow Council here? And how everybody, everybody's honest to a point. You know, even Moff Gideon, like, oh, <laughs> cloning? Well, I thought that was your thing. I, I don't want cloning. <laughs> right, you know? right, right. What do you think of the Shadow oh, come Council? Come on. Here, yeah, no, that's not my thing. Um, well, I, I mean, Bubba, this is just, a, it, it feels like it's hurting cats. I mean, even, oh, yeah. even for oh, yeah. Moff Gideon, I feel like, you know, they're like, you know, Moff. Mm. So, sometimes you know it's probably better for this to have the meeting and none of us be in person. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this character, another character from the expanded universe of novels and things like that, in that this character called Captain Pelion, mm-hmm. who's who's I guess naming the new big bad. We heard the name Grand Admiral Thrawn in season two on Ahsoka's lips. We have heard Grata, Grata, Admiral Thrawn going back to the 1990s when Lucas wasn't going to make any more films. And he allowed this sci-fi author, Timothy Zahn, to write a series of Star Wars books. And the villain, the main villain in that was Admiral Thrawn. And so now finally we're going to get him in live action. Captain Pelion's like, listen, Grand Admiral Thrawn's return will herald the reemergency of our military and allow Com- Commandant Hux more time to finish Project Necromancer. Ooh, you know, Bubba, yeah. <laughs> as far as project name goes, that one sounds a little scary. No, <laughs> and it's not the perfect good. name if your plan, and we find out Commandant Hux, Commander Hux, is is uh, well by the name Hux. We know he's the father of Domhnall Gleeson's General Hux from the sequel trilogy. But you know, if you if you're going to try to somehow explain somehow Palpatine returned, having a project called Project Necromancer, that's mm-hmm. perfect. Yeah. But you you called it out, Catfish. These people. You know, Gideon has his own plans, man. He's like, a, you know what, Thrawn, you keep talking about Thrawn's return. I'm sick of waiting. I haven't heard any whispers about him. How about me? You know, like... Yeah, no, right, right. He's like, Thrawn ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's time for a new boss who doesn't double C. Uh, double Z. Cowardly coward. Oh. I mean, that's what he's saying. You know what? Probably what, what Moff is thinking is, sure, Thrawn, you do whatever you want. Uh, I got other plans. And they're coming along swimmingly. Yes, I already mentioned that Commandant Hux is like, hey, what became of that Dr. Pershing and the research you promised us? And Gideon's like, well, he got captured. And cloning, 
That's your domain. I, I don't clone. <laughs> me and Grogu, what are you talking about? No, That's not me. He is totally... Moff is like, I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever you say bounces off me and sticks onto you. Yep. Also, mm-hmm. hey, stop hogging all the cool shit, man. <laughs> He's like, when are you going to share? Well, yeah, even, even... I mean, this is some petty... There are some petty Karens in this Imperial Remnants. <laughs> he kept it belly on. He's like... He thinks I'm being the flashy one. I mean, come on. Now, Gideon is like, listen, I need reinforcements. Right. I need more troops, more bombers, some uh, Praetorian guards, the red guys from The Last Jedi, who we're going to see at the end of this episode. And he's worried that the Mandalorians want to retake Mandalore, and the group doesn't like that. Long live the Empire. Oof. Now, this doesn't go so far, Catfish, but... I guess it kind of hints it at the end. Gideon's like, oh, you take something good from this, this, this. He doesn't want the Mandalorians retaking Mandalore because he wants his faction to have probably access to a lot of Beskar, right? Like, g- 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 you right. guys stay away so we can build this great armor and, and kick butt. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, you know, he wants to... Once again, he's like, I don't have anything cool. <laughs> and he's got a whole mountain of Beskar he he's sitting on. And, oh my goodness gracious, Catfish. Mm-hmm. Then we cut to Navarro. And I never knew after a pirate ship crashes, a, you know, not even a half mile from town, it, development's going to blow up, man. If it's not growing, it's dying. Navarro is, we're going to be skyscrapers soon. Did they have already sectioned that spacecraft off into new lofts. They're like the new downtown lofts. Right. Man. From from the top tower, you can see the lava flats. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, it is prosperous, but anybody gets scared when an Imperial cruiser flies over your head. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. But on the bottom of the cruiser, the Mandalorians have painted a mythothor- mythosaur skull to let everybody know we're not Imperial dude we're us and it's so obvious that our boy grief doesn't get scared like he got scared so much last week trying to hide behind his chair already he's like no worries this is it now uh bo-katan and this in this group of mandos with the imperial cruiser they fly over to the slightly less developed lava flats (laughs) Glen Gary uh, Flats uh, area, but they're going to bring these two together. We're going to bring together helmet off, mm-hmm. helmet on. The helmet on Creed. When when the when the new like cruiser shows up, they weren't practicing catfish, nor were they being attacked by an animal to kill them. They must not feel comfortable. <laughs> They're not living in the sewer. You know, they're like, this is miserable. That said, Paz Vizsla did send the kids inside. He sent Ragnar inside. He's like, hey, hey, I don't want you to see these apostates without your helmet You can't see on. this. Yeah, you this is not this. good. Go, 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 go in your room and look at your Playboy that's hidden under your bed. <laughs> that's okay. Helmet off now. Hel- yeah, the other helmet on. So listen, the armor says it's feast time. And is it just me? Do they start ro- roasting some of the pterodactyl foundlings that they had from the other episode? What are they roasting? You know, listen, sometimes foundlings work out, sometimes they don't. And the high magistrate, Grief shows up. He's brought wine from Coruscant. That's why you know, he, you know, hey, hey, hey. And he, but he's like, he's like, you may not want to open this while everyone else is around. Right, save the good mm-hmm. stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. He's like, <laughs> you know what Paz Vishla says? He's like, oh, we're going to have wine? Did you bring enough straws for everybody? Oh, yes. Terrible. <laughs> so, but they okay. can't take their helmet off. Grief has another gift, Catfish. Mm. And we are 9 out of 10. But this next gift has got to be 10 out of 10. Oh, my God. The Anzellans have turned IG-11 into IG-12. It's a new pram for Grogu. This is just gold. I mean, I've I've said it almost on every podcast. Grogu gold. This is hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. I mean, it is so good. And, and uh, I mean, Mando's like, this isn't working for me. Oh, Grogu, so good. Grogu's so- doing the yes, 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 yes. And it's, it's like, just let him try it in the office. <laughs> 
and, and kids, you know, uh, I, I don't have any kids. Do you have any kids, Kevin? No, Bubba. But you know, is this the terrible twos or the terrible threes where they literally could just say, no, 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 I want this. Yes, yes, yes. Comedy gold. He's grabbing the fruit from the street vendor man. Perfect. They, you're, you're right about season three. Like, we needed to get to this. But why not get to this in episode you know when they in the pirate episode or something man like they needed they needed this is gold holding this back is ridiculous it, it, it is absolutely amazing you know uh, the, what we've talked about before is sort of we want to see Grogu maybe grow up a little bit yeah but not here no <laughs> <laughs> not here no 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 all right so the, the they're having their roast you know these these helmet on Mandalorians love their campfires and the cookouts but it's an hashtag ice cold reception. These mm. guys have not come together. Um, Bo Katan tries, and I guess she is successful. She's like, listen, we're going to send a small recon team down. We're going to find what remains of the Great Forge. And this is a classic scene you see in everything. It's like, okay, we're going to need some volunteers. <laughs> Nobody wants to do it. But, of course, the first one has to be who? It's got to be Mando. It's got to be Mando. Why would he bring Grogu to this dangerous situation? Oh, well. But who knows? We're always complaining when he does bring Grogu, and then we complain when he doesn't bring Grogu. All right. So he's Mando's a helmet-on guy, so he's going to join. Then we got to have a helmet-off person, Casca Reeves. She's got to join. And then, you know, slowly we get Paz Vizsla from helmet-on. We get uh, uh, we get um, Axe from the helmet-off group. And so... I will. Oh, but this is just basically the uh, I'm Spartacus scene. Right. And then who is the last person to step up and say, I'll go to the armor? The armor catfish. She does it seem strange. It seems actually logical that she should go. She's the leader of her people. Why not go? If you're really going to go resettle Mandalore, if you're the armor, you should be one of the people going. I agree. And she's great with a hammer. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. <laughs> I'd look at everything as a nail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, we, you know, let's just get to it. We cut, and the show just got to it. This is wonderful. Okay, so we're going to go. We're going to go cut. We're coming out of hyperspace above Mandalore. Because there's this atmospheric, dif- atmospheric dis- disturbance, the dropship's going to go, and they are going to lose communication. Never good unless you want an action scene with tension and stuff. There's no backup. Nobody's going to come. Okay, perfect. I love it. And then Paz Vizsla. You know, we're, this is a character who is is got a helmet on the whole time. We've never seen a face for Paz Vizsla for the armor. And he has to get across, you know, seeing your home world, you know, devastated. And his is, it's worse than I thought. I mean, damn. Right. And then there's just some rando who's like, oh, I was here when it happened. Right. <laughs> well, no, that might have been Axe who said that. Well, a bunch of people. Uh, yeah, if yeah. Someone said it. I was, I was here when it happened. I was in the room where it happened. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this planet is a dump. I, I mean, this is so hard. If it's my home world, I guess I would try to save it, even though there are a million yeah. better places to live. But even the lava flats at this point might be a better place to live. But okay, okay. But the catfish, I'm totally into this episode. But at this point, I'm like, okay, they've lost communication with their fleet. They're down below the clouds. Who are the spies? What are they going to do? They're going to totally betray the heroes. The spies that the episodes are titled the spies. I mean, you know, that's funny because at this very same moment, I had a question. Okay, yeah. And I was thinking after I heard the guy say, I was here when it happened. Yeah. I said... They were British Mandalorians? It's a frigging huge planet, Catfish. Accents from all okay, parts got of the it, planet. got it, got it. All right, so Bo-Katan lands her ship. Now, this is a bit interesting. Shouldn't she, especially if she was the ruler, shouldn't she somehow be able to tell where the Great Forge was? But she kind of just lands in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, okay, let's 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 try it out. Yeah, you just, there's a little... There's a little wonky stuff that I'll ask you later on that that's probably just me. Okay, so they uh, they go, okay, we'll land here and then we'll figure out our way to the Great Forge. And then out of the blue comes the Pirates of the Caribbean, a sail barge. Now, of course, as Boba Fett once said, that whole Mandalore, that planet's glass. And so, of course, you would be able to ski across glass, but... 
suddenly there are more Mandalores who've been here the whole time after the Great Purge. They somehow, if they're maybe they're the spies, but they survived the Great Purge. This is crazy. It's amazing. I mean, last week it was Starskin Hutch. Now this week it is Captain and Commander. Oh, yes, this yes, is yes. so good. Now, well, Bubba. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let me. Well, I'm going to ask you this. I've got a big no. question coming no. up. All right. My question is this. It is coming up where there's a bunch of them that are wounded. How did I miss how they got wounded? They surely have not been wounded since the Great since Purge. Mandalore, right? Or they, maybe, hold is on. It, is it brought up and no maybe. one, and, and I forgot? No, no, no. Mandal. well, when they flee the ship, maybe we didn't see them, but when the giant beast comes out and smashes the ship, maybe all didn't escape and fly away somehow? I, I thought they did. I, I got no idea. Oh, boy. I thought this was before they got attacked. No. Yeah, no, that could be true. Yeah. Well, I think it was before yeah. they got attacked. So I was like, how did I miss their they, their last battle okay. <laughs> against whoever's out here? Well, okay, let's talk about this okay. because this is something. Let's do it. Listeners, you know, there have been all these hints, and they often talk about, oh, you got to watch the animated show. But even this part wasn't on the animated show. Bo Katan has to, has to reveal exactly what happened. She's like, okay, I was the leader. We were getting destroyed by the Empire. I surrendered because, you know, as a, as a way to get them to stop bombing us. And when I surrendered, that's how Moff Gideon got the dark saber. She does not deserve the dark saber. She gave it up. True, but it's the idea of hey, okay, you know, it's a surrender. I'll surrender. You stop bombing us. You stop killing everybody. Moff Gideon, he didn't give a rat's. He still bombed. He still killed everybody. That's if terrible. If she believed, if she really believed that, Bubba. I've got some great land on the lava flats on Navarro to sell her. Okay? Because that is the most ridiculous thing you'd believe ever. Why would... If you're... Yes. Yes. Now that we kind of see everything, that was ridiculous. But in a lot of ways, you would think, why the Empire wants to rule everybody... If you're dead, there's nobody to rule, but the Empire probably really did just want the best card. Get so, out of here so we can mind mess Right, up. so... The reaction that the Mandalorians, and especially our special Mandalorian, yeah. Din Djarin, have is the exact opposite of the reaction I have. <laughs> That's true. Well, she's, you know, she gets a moment alone as they're sailing to the Great uh, uh, Forge. And, you know, she's down in the dumps. She's like, maybe I'm not the person to, to, to lead them. And Mando, who wasn't there, he was hidden on the moon of Concordia with his helmet on tribe. He's gonna he's gonna buck her up. He's gonna he's gonna be Jon Snow to her Daenerys when Jon Snow bends the knee. Spoilers for Game of Thrones, there, everybody. Boy, oh my <laughs> goodness, big spoilers for the end. But Mando says this, and it's from the heart. He says, "What you did means more to me than a stupid, you know, dark saber. What you did, what what it is, is it's more to me is honor. You know, I don't care about a dark saber. What means more to me is honor, loyalty, and character." This is why I serve you, Lady Crees. Damn, your song is not yet written. I will serve you until it is. Oh, that is that is that is lovely words from Mando N to Pocatan. Now this is surprising because they were sort of foes. Oh yeah, for they've a bit. helped each other out. Yeah, and but they, he's and, never and, like sort of. He's never indicated that like I'm I'm here to serve you. Right, and he could have after she saved him back in the second episode of this season. Remember when he was on a when he was on a spit and having his blood drained? Yeah, I mean, how about she? She told him, "Yeah, there the the waters are still there. There's still everything's there." And then, she, yeah, when she saved him, he could he at any time he could have also been like, you know, that would have been a good moment for him to say, "Thank you, I." You know, I sort of bend the knee, and here's the dark saber. Yeah, right. That of all course. could have happened of at the course. same time. So this, this like expression of feelings comes feels like it comes a little out of nowhere. The Grogu has changed, Mando. <laughs> He's like my son needs a mother. I love it. Well, so then, who's the Mando now? The wonderful question. We'll also talk about. Or is who is the female? <laughs> <laughs> the Woomando. All right, listen. So Bo-Katan goes to the armor, 
And the armor's saying, hey, these injured people you were talking about, catfish, it's before the alien attacks. <laughs> the armor's like, hey, I'll go in your ship. I'll get these injured people back to the fleet. And she takes off. And in some ways, maybe this is sus- suspicious. And in the episode, I'm thinking, oh, is she the spy? It's all suspicious. It's all, Yeah, everything is I'm going telling on. you, before Paz, Paz went out in a blaze of glory, I was suspicious of him. Well, I'm suspicious of everybody. Why? Because they said spies. Now, Paz Vizsla and Axe Wolves play a version of chess and just like us they fight when they play chess they now, they, they, they attack hold each on, other Bubba, i want to be clear okay yeah. who started this fight one person said to the other one called refer to him as one of these primitives now oh, Bubba, i don't I care if that. your teammates Bubba, i love that no, if no someone no. calls you a bitch you gotta swing on them what well- <laughs> <laughs> Man, I could just go to listen to me. But it is submit or fight. Yeah. And Axe Wolves, in another Game of Thrones spoiler, Axe Wolves chooses violence. Yeah, you got to. And just last week, Bo Katan was telling him, he's like, listen, we Mandos have injured ourselves enough. Now, but hold he on, doesn't Bubba. Care. He doesn't I'm going to tell you something. In the next five it. minutes, yeah. I am going to give you an opinion, and then I'm going to I'm going to go a, a complete 180. I'm warning you on this. So, absolutely. But it's going to make sense in both cases. What the F happened to rousing speeches? I mean, the order leaves for one second, and it all goes to hell. I mean, listen, here's yeah. an alternate. Axe could have chased Paz like in the sky in his jetpack until yeah. Paz's went out and yeah. Paz's would just drown oh, in the that'd ocean. Oh, that'd be good. That'd be good. That'd be good. All right. All right. Well, how about how about this? You say, uh, you know, the big the big rousing speech to rally everybody together. In this case, the speech was no. No, no, because IG-12 steps in with Grogu and says, stop fighting, guys. Now, here I am. Here it is, Bubba. I'm going 180 degrees. No, no. All right. So, what? first of all, why the heck would they listen to Grogu? Grogu doesn't mean anything to them. They don't know anything about his special powers. He's not important to them any in any way. But also now... I'm on Bo's side. You can't start this. Look, I'm. I, I'm. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. should have given a rousing speech. Or right. once they start it, they got to finish it. You can't let it simmer. So I know. So I understand why. After Bo says, "No, nah, this is inevitable. It should happen." And then Grogu, she Grogu stops it and she goes, "No, oh, Mando, you should be proud of your boy." <laughs> I'm like, right. I, what's right. happening, Bo? Right. And then Mando, let's give him, uh, you know, the truth comes out of Mando real yeah. quick. You didn't learn that from me. That <laughs> oh, was, yeah. you know, that was no, too smart. No, no. Okay, so we get a monster of the week. And this maybe is yeah, another yes. reason why I'm voting it a little, not 10 out of 10. Okay. You this don't monster like the, you just don't like pops up out of the you? I do, but talk about just popping up out of the blue. Like, and it didn't serve a purpose other than to get them off, to destroy the pirate boat. So I guess they don't have a way to, uh, you know, they don't have a way to get out. I you know, Bubba, I really, really miss an opportunity for humor here. One of the helmet on Mandalorian students said, see, I told you it was safer on our, our planet. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's go back to the cave at Lake. This is, this is, at least they can hide in a cave, but oh my God, there is a cave, Bubba. Here we go. It's the Great Forge oh, and man. it's a wreck, but we just, out of the blue, got attacked by a humongous Kaju. Oh, snap. These Imperial troopers in their crazy white and black Beskar show up. It's Beskar, and so now we have the answer to why the trace of Beskar showed up on the ship where Moff was broken out of. Yes, exactly. I would have thought, I could say that they're trying to frame Mandalorians, but really we know that Beskar is the best R. It is. So it makes sense. And then (laughs) it's a battle. Mm-hmm. Hey, we love battles on this show that does it well. Mando tells Grogu in IG-12, okay, kid, oh you got to keep up. Why not tell Kib, hey, kid, hang back. Let us do the fighting. You know, Bubba, this is what I was worried about. Honest to God, when they had the IG-12, because the thing did pop up yeah. before the Enzel came oh, out. Yeah. So I thought, oh, my goodness, are we now going to have, is, is Grogu going to be stuck inside of IG-12? No, no, perfect, right? no free Grogu. If it was up to Pat, man, Grogu would be in a helmet encased in plastic. He sure would. He should would. Now, Catfish. Yeah. They suddenly, this cave near the Great Forge, suddenly starts looking like a top secret Imperial base. Oh, no. And then our hero, our t- titular character, Mando, is trapped outside in an ambush. Oh, my God. Say it with me, Bubba. Say what? It's a trap. <laughs> no. And then, then let me say this. Mm-hmm. Moff Gideon flies down 
dressed to the nines in his best car outfit, looking sharp. He's talking, and he's talking like it's already over. He's saying, hey, you know, you are a talented people, but your time has passed. I mean, that, I I mean, you know where he came from right before this, right? He had some dude shining up every little piece, and that thing looked great. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? So he goes through the whole thing, and that's when he's telling him, I'm going to take, I am taking the best of everything. There's the best. I've taken the bad ideas from these people, these people, these people, and now I am making an improvement on the armor and what does he say Bubba? the most impressive improvement on this armor is that it has me in it oh oh my oh, drop oh, oh, oh. hell yeah now i have a question for you though okay gideon's like activate the bombers destroy the fl- mando fleet up there mm-hmm. but then he also talks about mando din Dejir, and he's got him captured for god's sakes he's got the other mandos trapped between blast doors <laughs> and he says about din Djarin, to his troops he says Take him to the debriefing room. Why not kill Mando now? This is like a James Bond villain not killing Bond when they get the chance. Why Why not kill Mando? What, what except, You want Grogu. Ex- you don't care about him. Except in this case is that, well, yes, it'd be better if he got Grogu. But in this case, if you want to kill Bond, your problems are over. Moff's got a lot of different problems. Okay, okay. And Mando has maybe answers and information that will help him with those problems. No, that is actually very smart. Listeners, what do you think? Should Gideon have just killed, shoot first, ask questions never? Or was he right to take Mando to the debriefing room? And Gideon, he doesn't care about these other Mandos. Like He's like, kill him. And then we get this big bit of action. Bo Katan goes with the dark saber to cut a rest, you know, to cut a hole so they can get out of there. Very I smart. And Paz Vizla is like going to cover everybody as they escape. And then, of course, he decides he's not going to cover everybody. This is the way. His last words. Holy cow! He shoots his gun so much the gun lights on. The gun is like melting, melting in his hands. Oh, but he took so many people out. He oh took my god! So, there were no none of these. None of these special troopers, even with Beskar, could survive against that Gatling gun. But, yep, you know who shows up. These, these guys were in The Last Jedi, and these this is an early version of them here. It's the Praetorian Guards show up. And R.I.P. Ragnar's pops. Oh, my God. Ah, Paz Vishla. You know what Ms. Batman would say? Hey, go. Oh, I thought you... I thought, Sorry, Miss, Miss Catfish. Holy I, cow. I thought you were going to say, as Batman would say, even dead, keep the helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we're left on a cliffhanger. So Grogu Holy did cow. escape. Grogu in IG-12 escaped out the hole. Yeah. Bo-Katan cut. Mando is captured. Our heroes are in real bad shape. This is one of those things you're always like, well, who could be the cavalry to come? Or is the cavalry Grogu in IG-12 doing some insane moves? Because IG-11, remember, was kind of the cavalry that saved Mando and the crew when they were trapped in the, at near the end of season one. Who, who's going to save these guys? I mean, this is bad, man. Have we seen... Oh, I know who could save us. Sorry, you go. Have, you, have we seen Grogu... Do do anything except for cute things this year. I mean, he tried to save Mando, but he didn't. He force pushed the one alien and, and knocked them out of the way. Okay, sure. So, so you're right. But okay, this is what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. What's going to be the cavalry? It's going to be the mythosaur. That's what's going to be the cavalry to show up. Like somebody's going to go get the mythosaur, tame it, ride it, whatever. Maybe that. Maybe that's Grogu. Whoa. And that's how they're going to. That's how they're going to get out of this jam because they are. They're they're in a they're in a no win situation. They're in bad no, they, shape. They're, they're in they, bad shape right now. They're in trouble. Listeners, what do you guys think? What did you think of this episode? We're going to get to some of your feedback in a second, but no, you can always reach out to us and tell us what you thought on our social media platform. That's at Double PHQ down in YouTube. Go write those comments on Instagram, Hive, Twitter, Facebook.com slash at Double PHQ. This is it, guys. There's only one more episode left. Oh, incredible. No, no. Oh, my God. Well, Bubba, whew, yeah. we, 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 you know what? 
I think we went through that, through that so fast because that was a thrilling episode. It was episode. a thrilling episode. Holy cow. And, and we, still, we still don't know the spies. We still don't know why it was spies, plural, or maybe it's just a typo. Somebody at Disney Plus, somebody at Disney Plus heard the spy. Oh, that's terrible. Let's go to the spies. Wow. Wow. All right, well, Bubba, well, we've covered the episode, and now it's time to get to some amazing things that we oh, have. Yeah. We do every week. Every and week. We, oh, my goodness. We propose our own, but you are willing. We, you are invited to provide <laughs> your own. We love yeah. the feedback. we got so much feedback this week. So we got to quickly go through the gregorable moments of the episode. I mean, basically, it was... Just oh I no, mean, squeegee no, no, I mean, no squeezy man. I mean, this is perfect. And the first one I wrote it down, and it, it wouldn't even rate anymore. But I wrote it down when he said, "That's not the only gift I have for you." And Grogu was like, "Gift? What?" <laughs> right, Goku. But yes, Goku's and then ear the, picked up. The, that's and Zell walking down was so cute, and then the bad baby no squeezy. Oh, so and good. And then just all the no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Catfish. Oh, it's so good. Uh, my Gregorable moment Tell of me. the episode. Is every moment with Grogu in the in the IG eleven IG twelve suit? Excuse me, let me say that correctly now. Perfect, oh, hilarious, laugh yeah. out loud, mm-hmm. funny at times. I loved it. Amazing, amazing. All right, so let's go through the man delicious lines. Ooh. Uh, I've got a couple funny ones. The first funny one is that doesn't work for me. Shout out, oh. shout out to Matt's test lab one who oh, tweeted that at us. So, so good, good, so good. And my another, another one is a reaction when Bo Katan says, "I need volunteers from both tribes," and suddenly everyone is very interesting at what's happening on the ground right at their feet. Right. Yes. Well, how are my shoes? <laughs> oh my goodness! Wait, is, it, is that a worm? What's going on? <laughs> All right. And the badass is again. But say it one more time. It's so good. And the most impressive improvement is that it has me in it. Oh man, oh. Moff. Okay. Oh. And then again, Moff. Captain Pelion, you always speak with much authority, and yet I see <laughs> once again that Grand Admiral Thrawn is missing from your delegation. Oh, so good. And then Mando's, what means more to me is honor and loyalty and character. All right, Bubba, what is your man delicious line of the episode? I've already said it twice, but Moff Gideon, if you're going to have a villain, he's got to do bad stuff. And wonderfully, Moff Gideon does bad stuff. But also, you want him to be interesting so that you spend time, so the time you're spending with him is interesting. And the most impressive improvement is that it has me in it. It's so good. Oh, I I drink your milkshake, man. <laughs> yes, so dang. good. Good. So good. I'm I'm in 110 percent agree with with you, Bubba. So we'll slide right next to Grief's beef. Okay. What oh, issues did we have there with the episode, Bubba? I just have one. Let's hear it. I was promised spies. You'll get spy. <laughs> no, I didn't even see spy in this episode. I was promised spies, but Bubba, I will say this. Yeah, let's hear it. I was thinking. You Let's know, see. another bad thing about having helmets is yeah. you don't know who exactly is underneath there. Uh-huh. You could have somebody replaced in a suit. They do a little voice modulator. Oh, wow. And then, boom, they're a spy. So that is another very, very negative thing for helmet on. My question to you, Bubba. Yeah. Is Elia the armorer? What? That would be so tricky. <laughs> Why does the armor keep disappearing for days? She came back with this Coruscant wine <laughs> that she gave to Grief for some reason, and then he gave it to Mando. Uh, all right, so my grief beef, and listeners, once again, our grief beef is the thing, the one thing that kind of was the rock in our shoe that we didn't like about the episode. Catfish, your thing about Promise Spies was brilliant. I'm going to say that. I've had a bit too many Monsters of the Week. So this Monster of the Week was the least fun. I always love Monsters of the Week, but this one was my least fun. That's my grief beef for this week. But Yeah, there wasn't a long fight. It wasn't a long fight no, with them. They had no. to run away because they were severely underpowered. Exactly <laughs> right. But I do want to get to my good grief. Let's hear it. My good grief this week is that a lot of people have pointed out, and this could, in the grief beef column, hey, season two ended, we're handing off Grogu to Luke. Season three begins, Grogu's back with Mando, not with Luke. Season two ends, Moff Gideon has been arrested. We're going to turn him over to authorities, and he's going to pay for everything he's did. Season three begins, oh yeah, he's escaped. He's still evil, not that. So I'm mentioning these negative things Mm -hmm. to say that what I consider a good grief 
is that we need a overarching villain. This is Star Wars. We can't have complexity mm -hmm. as Andor has shown us. But even in Andor, there are the people that our heroes are fighting against. And Gideon's not in this show enough, but when he is in the show, he's a good villain for our heroes to fight again. So forgive me, Matt Murdock, but my good grief is that Gideon is a good villain. And he, even in his brief scenes in this episode, because oh he was God. at the beginning, then at the end, he's gold. So that's my good grief this week. What about that's you? What did you like this week? What was the good grief cargo this week? Well, but for me, it's just, you know, we see a lot of people that are out there and the planets and they just, they got a rough life and they're just trying to, <laughs> keep, trying, trying to just keep it all together. And, of course. You know, but, it's but, tough times but out there. But then we see what life is like on the other side. And yeah, I'm talking about the dark side. It is beautiful armor both black oh, and, and his helmet. red oh, my holy gosh. cow let me tell you I something i joined the villains if i got a nice I'm suit right like that it, man. It, it, hey the dark side is worth it if you can get a bespoke suit <laughs> Well, okay, hold on. Let's let's debate suits real quick. You've okay. got Mando with that shiny Blaskar armor. You've got Grief Karga with robes where <laughs> you need droids to hold up the robes. And then you've got this shiny black and red mm -hmm. Beskar armor that Moff Gideon rocks. They're all good, but I actually I'm gonna go. You know the 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 new th the shiny new object is Moff Gideon's armor. I think it's the best. You know what I uh, I, I I was in it. I was I was really feeling it too. But those red Praetorian guards oh, yeah, yeah. uniforms, oh, yeah. holy yeah. cow! Also nice. It those lets are the everybody best. know that if you bleed on them, it doesn't. You know, it doesn't. They, you can't tell. You know, exactly. like, like they don't have to go to dry cleaning. They're I like, wonder if those armors have sort of. They have got like they must have some kind of anti dust coat on top <laughs> oh, of them because yes. they are shiny. Oh, All yes. right, Bubba, oh, we're going wow. next to this the bounty hunter guild battle. Who okay. wins the puck? And Bubba, you asked the question. I'm gonna go first this week. Let's I want to answer first. So, okay. Catfish. This uh -huh. episode, we've been we've been saying it as one of our kind of negatives of this great episode mm -hmm. is that the episode is titled "The Spies." Who are the spies? Mm -hmm. That's one thing. This is blowing up on Star Wars Online. People want to know. Well, blah, blah, all right. And so, so, and so, the big finger being pointed. Let's uh -huh. just say one of the reasons why it's being pointed is that when Moff Gideon rocked his new armor, what did you notice about his helmet? He had horns like on the top of his helmet. Mm. Who else has horns on the top of their helmet? It's the armor. So Whoa. the big question, is the armor the spy? Whoa. Horns yep. is gross. That's W-H-I-G. Whoa. Oh. Horns is gouty. Wig. <laughs> Bubba, I can't. Yes. I mean, I, I, I understand why you're asking because... As I was looking through the whole time, I thought, who would be the most shocking? Yeah. Paz. Obviously, he, he disqualified himself by dying. If the Paz class. was the spy and die, they'll never suspect me if I die right now fighting <laughs> my, right, my, right, my right. people I'm working That'd be with. Good. That's a good way to do it. And the armor was uh, decided to come along and then decided for some strange reason, even though her hammer is uh, better than uh, her flying, her flying. That she would uh, run away and take care of these people. So, yeah. but obviously r ridiculous that the armor would be the spy, Bubba. She has maintained this group of people. They were That's hiding out. That's they weren't. True. They weren't. They weren't. They weren't causing any trouble. They're staying on their planet. They're just living the old ways. They are. They are. They are not trying to branch out. They clearly do not care even about. Like they're. They're not like. They're not even the people who would knock on your door and be like, do you want to read this Watchtower magazine or can I talk to you about Jesus? <laughs> hey. If you've got your helmet off, yeah. they just want you to leave. They're not trying to proselytize to anybody. No, that's completely true. So it's clear yeah. that she's not the spy, Bubba. Let's go the other way. But there's no way. So let me argue this. Okay. First and foremost, mm -hmm. what does Gideon do to Mandalorians? He kills them. Mm -hmm. Bo-Katan surrendered, and he still bombed and killed Mandalorians. What has the armor been doing? Making them live in a place where they always die. She's like, <laughs> here, let's let them live by this cave. Where the Kaiju will kill them. Oh, here, this, this flying pterodactyl will kill them. 
But then, let's, <laughs> okay. So you're saying she, she, she's, she's one by one. Slowly one by one. Okay, one all right. By I can one, see that. the armorers got it. Got now, it. Hold on. Let's talk about this. What did mm-hmm. Moff Gideon obviously do? He established a uh, imperial base on Mandalore. Mm-hmm. What has the armor been doing? The armor was the one who told Din Djarin that the planet you couldn't was uninhabitable. Even Bo Katan knew, no, you could breathe there, you could do these things. But the armor was the one telling her tribe, no, it's uninhabitable, you can't live on Mandalore. She was also the one who 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 didn't want them to go to Mandalore until suddenly Bo Katan shows up. Like Bo Katan shows up who knows, oh, wait, I can go to Mandalore. In fact, that's when she kind of flipped her script is when it was like, yeah, we were in the living waters. We went to the living waters. It's real. You can breathe there. We saw the mythosaur. It's at that point that she's suddenly like, huh, these other Mandalorians, these helmet off Mandalorians could be trouble. Let's, Bo Katan, you need to gather them all up. <laughs> gather them all up in one place where we can bring them to Mandalore and then Moff Gideon can kill them. If she is the spy, uh huh. To be honest, it's more fun to kill them one by one with the kaju in the lake and the pterodactyl that eats Ragnar for a day and then spits him up. But you uh-huh. could see this. You could see this. Why did she suddenly flip and say, no, Bo Katan, you take your helmet off? Like, it made no sense at the time. It, it it also kind of makes no sense, though, that, that she's doing this. It makes no sense. If she really does care about her people, uh-huh. it makes no sense to, 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 to kill them and to not let them live on their planet. Even if you are, if, even if you do support the Imperials, it'd be like, yeah, just don't go over there where they built a base near the Great Forge. I think. I don't know. So, but I think there are ways you could argue the armor is the spot. I mean, I, you, you've almost convinced me in ways which are hilarious, yes. and then also like uh, realistic. Oh, thank God! Yeah, yeah. All right. So, listen. If you want to sign on to this, the armor is the spy because yeah. she's horned and sadistic, wants to kill her people <laughs> one by one. Please tweet at us at right. Double PHQ. Oh, tell yeah. Bubba whether you agree with him. Whoa, horns is god awful. That's W H I G. Whoa, horns is god awful. All right, horns is god awful. But look, this yeah. is usually the time of the episode where we do the quintuple M. The quintuple M? Yeah, Matt Murdock's Mandalorian musical analysis. Oh, brother. But we're not doing that tonight. Thank goodness. We're so doing the what? septuple M. <laughs> that was the septuple M. Yes, Matt Murdock's Mandalorian musical analysis with Moff Merriment. Moff Merriment? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. This can't be Matt. Who have you replaced Matt no, with if let's, there's Moff let's, Merriment? Let's, let's listen. And so it has happened, and you probably expect it. You will hear me freak out. I will not. I will admit that as much as I feel like we could have taken a, quote, middle season and expanded it into having a different kind of big bad at the end, this episode just tickled me. And the return of Moff Gideon tickled me just from the episode itself, not because of what I think it means for the kind of redundancy of the overall story. Enough about that. Instead, I will say that with the inevitable return of Moff Gideon, we get the inevitable return of Moff Gideon's theme. Now, we've talked about this a little bit before. It was first introduced in Season 1, and it's a very simple motive, and it's based on a minor scale, perhaps a melodic minor scale ascending or a harmonic minor scale. Both of those types of minor scales include most of your minor notes, but there's differences in the sixth and seventh scale step. With both of those types of scales that I just mentioned, the seventh step is a naturalized seventh, meaning that it doesn't follow diatonically with its corresponding major. You don't need to know any of that, right? You probably remember this theme well, but I'll play it once again. Sounds like this. (laughs) 
The shape is very simple. It does emphasize that major seventh. It's the jumping from the second to the third note that goes down to that major seventh and then back up to the root. And it is usually played in a very low octave. Why would they want to do that? Well, uh, Ludwig did this a long time ago, naturally. He created this theme. And sometimes, because of the kind of resonance that strings typically have when they're bowed hard and they're played in the lower register of the instrument, they sound more harsh, which is exactly the kind of sound you want to represent your bad guy right some some harshness some evilness brewing in there and that's what that bowed string sounds especially when it's done in octaves as it's usually done in the case with this theme and of course the melody must include the minor third because if you just had the first little bit you wouldn't be able to determine whether it was major or minor. The timbre might tell you that it was a bad thing, but by going up to the minor third, then you have a definitive harmonic context that tells us that this is a bad dude. And so welcome back Moff Gideon, welcome back Moff Gideon's theme. Also want to point out there were some really lovely stuff done with bo theme this episode. I'm not going to go through it. We've talked about how that theme works many, many times in this season alone. So I won't bore you with that. I'll just say you win once again, Patman23. Back to Bubba and Catfish. Whoa, whoa, Bubba. Oh, I am that was so... Not, what, Moff, and wait, Matt is the spy. He yeah, totally double-crossed now, us. He's back on the Moff train, as I think we would all be. If Moff tickled us the way he tickled Matt. Now keep it clean. Yeah. Don't get us demonetized on YouTube. Okay, but Bubba, I'm thinking yeah. that Moff tickling could be a Disney after dark ride. <laughs> I thought you just meant a Disney dark ride. You no, know, like a Disney have... after dark. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's for sure. Tickle me, Moff. Tickle me, Moffo. Right, Star Tours is more like Star Tickles. Bro. Star Touches. Star Tickles. Yeah, Star Tickles. 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 We really love you guys. We don't make any money on these podcasts. And so we, we just love the money we make is when you guys give us feedback and tell us what you think, even if you think we're too silly. We love it all. In this first bit of feedback, this podcast is going to be a day late because last night we were in a terrible rainstorm catfish. And I put this out on Twitter like, hey, I apologize. The podcast is going to be delayed because we were in a rainstorm outdoors in a rainstorm and a wonderful True Double L. Double L. Loyal listener who's at List Girl on Twitter. It's Christine Loves Grogu. She wrote and she said, San Diego rains in April. It's totally normal. Thanks for telling us before, Christine. Yeah, I know. You might have you might have told Humphreys concerts by the bay so they didn't try to kill the members oh, of They Might Be Giants oh who boy. are who are past retirement age. But uh we met Christine at Con of Thrones on our Joffrey podcast. Hell Con yes. of Thrones in twenty nineteen. Is that not cool? That's awesome. And Christine very kindly also wrote that she enjoys our podcast. Well, Christine, I hope you love this podcast where we're very silly, but both nine out of ten on this great episode we love it we do have some feedback on episode seven catfish so let's get to that now all right i already said link hogthrob at match test lab one this doesn't work for me lol you are right so good so good laura mcmillian who we always love hearing from she gave episode seven the spy she wrote wow that's a 10 out of 10 for me it doesn't get much better than that oh this is a great thing laura writes she says it's definitely the best episode of the season Hmm. i went from laughter with grogu yes 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 to despair r.i.p pause I'm still waiting for Bo-Katan on the Mythosome. Oh, Great well, point, Laura. Bubba says you might see it next week, or you might see how, according to Bubba, you might see Grogu inside IG-12 on top oh, of the there Mythosome. There you go, yeah. This, uh, yeah, it's a Sunday on a Sunday. <laughs> 
All right, Batman says they need to put a Mandalorian helmet on IG-12. I have spoken. Oh, boy, that is that is complete helmet on. With the droid has to have a helmet on. Oh, my God. Another great loyal listener, Harley Camille, at Harley Camille on Twitter. She also says 10 out of 10, best episode yet. Love it. Grogu was more gregorable than ever. Moff Gideon thinks he's Vader in a Mandalorian helmet. Great point, Harley Camille. So smart. A lot of tension in this episode. She wrote, Gideon better not touch Din with that mind flayer that they oh, used on Dr. Pershing. Ooh. Well, well, well if they, as, long as, they, as long as they keep it to like two or three, apparently it improves your <laughs> yeah, it's a tickle. personality. It's a <laughs> Tickle me, Mofo. Oh, my God. That now, last, even worse. That's all uh-huh. the pod- feedback we have for Episode 7 okay. the Spies. But, listeners, we know you want to tell us what you thought. So, please, once again, reach out to us. Last week's episode really, really had people split on it. And, in fact, to prove this, Harley Camille, who just gave this week's episode a 10 out of 10, she gave us feedback on last week's episode where she said last week, the one with Jack Black and Lizzo, she said it was probably... Least fave of the season. Whoa. She says she did enjoy seeing Black, Jack Black and Christopher Lloyd. She said Lizzo needs to work on her acting skills. I mean, she's not an actress. I would I will cut her some slack. But really, they, if they were going to hire her, it should have been for someone much less dialogue. Now, let me say, Camille says, give me more Grogu. She Camille. got it tonight. She did get it tonight, but... Uh, Harley, Camille, we need you in the writer's room to always say that. You know, anytime there's like a, well, what should we do with this story beat? Grogu. More Grogu. And she, do you want more Grogu? Yes. 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 Oh, so good. Uh, Camille (sighs) continues on that she was right about the Darksaber being Bo-Katan's. Din lost it in the battle. She won it from the droid. I think the Darksaber may actually belong to a character named Sabine Wren, who's from the animated show Rebels, who's going to be in the new Ahsoka series. Sabine won it in a battle, gave it to Bo-Katan, which is not good. you got to win it. And so she thinks Sabine Wren may get it. But even though she really hated the episode, in the end, she said she gave <laughs> well, it 8 out of 10. At least fave. At least she, fave. So only 8 out of 10. 8 okay. out of 10 double M's. Wait, wait, double M's? Yes, yeah. you meddling Mandalorians. Oh, man. If it wasn't for those double M's. Right. Yeah, very Scooby-Doo episode. That's a good point. Christopher Lloyd's like, and I would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for those double M's. And the fact that I'm kind of the biggest star. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Holly at Hunt Pants for episode six. I had the best time watching that episode. Nat- so natural. I'm looking forward to hearing you guys hate it on the pod. And she was Holly, shocked. She was Kathy. completely she wrong. She was shocked because we loved it. Now, oh, here we go. Once again, this was a mixed episode last week where Elias Sideways on Twitter wrote the worst episode of the season. People thought Ed Sheeran's acting was bad. Another Game of Thrones callback here. Make way for more stupid cameos. If someone wants to see the baby, it better be Werner Bloody Herzog. Now, yes. that part we 100% the agree quiet. with. We're that all part we agree quiet. with. All right. All right. Travis Drew, he said, I've got a few comments about the season so far. Okay. The Mandalorians seem a bit disappointing as a group compared with my vision of them. Yeah. Okay. These are the people who battled the Jedi. Oh, man. Why did anyone go see if, and if Mandalore was safe? Wonderful. Clearly, they've got dumber over time or the smarter <laughs> members have been called at one of their secret hideouts. <laughs> What happened to all the people fleeing the town in episode 5? It looks like a bustling city of at least 10,000 people, and yet while under attack, only 20 people were worried. Enough to meet at the rendezvous point. Right, right, right. That's Lastly, good. Yeah, oh. as the Mandalorians reunite over the next two episodes, I would love to see them go out in the galaxy and find them in all different planets and environments, catching glimpses in what they're doing now. Bouncers, military trainers, <laughs> bounty hunters, underground fight club. Right. It's really limited. Your your LinkedIn page, uh, you know, of what your skills are, are, you know, fighting by the lake. Pretty good. Travis, those are some great comments. They I love are. it. Now, Pat Mann, we've already mentioned him on episode seven. On episode six, which some people really didn't like, Pat Mann wrote, this episode was fun. I'd gladly watch Bo and Din solve more crimes. Yes. Yeah. Sir Grogu wasn't in the episode much, but he was having fun hobnobbing at court, which was great. 
It was fun in the way the fouling episode was not all that fun. Interesting. I kind of, you know, I get it, Batman. I definitely get it. I enjoyed the classic cop stuff. Bo getting the dark saber, the Quarren, Mon Calamari, Doom romance at the beginning. See, these are the things. That, yeah, Batman, this is what I'm feeling. He says, our man Mando is helping Bo-Katan do her thing. And it's okay if the title character of a show is acting in support of somebody else. I completely agree. Some people like, but it's like every episode he's acting in somebody else. Now, he notes a show which is very important here, Catfish. He says, if you remember the old HBO show Rome, it was following Titus Pulo and Lucius as they were doing their own things going on. But they were also part of the history of Rome. You know, they get do stuff with Caesar and, and Brutus and everybody. So it's almost like that in a way. Well, I would disagree with them only in this sense, is that we knew it was Lucius's and Titus Pullo's show. That they were part of the show from right. the beginning. They were. They were. So and he, yeah, they were uh, what you would think would be minor characters, but for the show, they were major characters. That's true. But if you're a fan of HBO's Rome listeners, Titus Pulo makes a cameo in the Ahsoka trailer they released at Star Wars Celebration, and I would also wonder, the real Star Wars fans know that the other character, the other character on Rome, the character who was Lucius, he voiced a character in a Mandalorian character. So people are wondering if he would show up in live action. Holy cow. He's been on Grey's Anatomy all these years since Rome. And, so. and, 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 and by the way, just just to, if, if Patman thinks that I don't care about Rome, yeah. he should know that my 15-year-old dog who just passed away, his name was Titus Pullo. After that character. After Rome. that character, that's right. And right. for 15 years, I had to explain that. <laughs> Listeners, if you have HBO or HBO Max or as it's about to be branded Max check out Rome it's a, it's a fun show uh, just it was gone too soon but it but still worth watching now uh, Double M Matt Murdock who we've kind of been teasing about his Moth Gideon flip flops he said his favorite Double C Double C Catfish quote oh boy it can eh? he goes <laughs> from the last week's podcast was when Catfish said for everybody here at the Parsec Passion Podcast but he, that's what he meant to say but Catfish instead to say for everybody here at the Power Stick Passion <laughs> Podcast <laughs> Accidents happen, double yeah, They do. They do. They do. And then our good old buddy, Bucho. We love Bucho. Bucho said, agreed with you, chaps. Aside from the very last Darksaber shot, which looked like bo was pouring frozen Coke out of a weirdly shaped dressing, uh, drinking vessel, yes. this ep was a good time. Second best of the season so far after Minds of Mandalore. Most of season three has been a little double L. Wait, wait. D- does he explain double L? Lacking luster, oh. of course. But this one felt like an inspired cross between a Clone Wars episode and the fifth element oh, and yeah. I'll take all of they've got of that and more eight double G's. Double G's. Gymnastic Grogu's out of ten. Oh, Bucho, you know how last week Manda was like you had me at, at uh, Battle Droids? Yeah. You had me at Frozen Coke. <laughs> Bucho, I'm down with these comments. I should put them first. That's so good. Well, speaking of that, Endless Mike, his comment to last week's episode was... You had me in Battle Droids. That was a great line. That's Endless Mike 03. We love that. I think our final comment on last week's very divisive episode 6 of season 3 is from another great buddy of ours, Levi, who's at sweet underscore tortilla on Twitter. Levi said that that episode with Jack Black and Lizzo, he said the episode very much a filler episode oh. that he would expect from an animated show. Ouch. He did enjoy Din and kicking those battle droids. Hey, once again, you know, you got to enjoy the stuff you enjoy, and that was fun. He said he hopes Christopher Lloyd comes back and has a bigger contribution to the story. Mm, I, just, I don't, think I don't that's know if happening. he does, but we all do love Christopher Lloyd, we do. so I agree with that. And then he continues... Also, he's okay with Bo-Katan getting the Darksaber and leading Mandalore. While I expect it to be Din, you guys are right. His and Grogu's story has kind of ended in Season 2. If anything, I expect Mando to leave the Mandalorian and become a selling point for the Book of Boba Fett Season 2. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, bringing back some bounty hunter shenanigans. Now, Levi, that's pretty darn smart. I could see that happening, man. Uh, you know, who doesn't love uh, Boba Fett's sense of humor? <laughs> When he's in the back of tank, he's like, uh, I got some great jokes. I love old Bubba. Let's end it differently this week, Catfish, because yeah. oh. we skipped all the news. Yeah. 
Now, this it's fine that it's in the end of a podcast because if people listen, you know, months from now, this isn't news. So that's probably smart that we put it at the end. But Catfish, tell me, here are the Parsec Passion Podcast. We are busy in August when Ahsoka comes out. Mm-hmm. Ahsoka trailer, really, this will be fun because you haven't watched the animated shows at all. I kind of watched them. So if you like a podcast of people who are kind of meeting these characters for the first time, that's going to be us when we talk about Ahsoka in August of this year. Love it. In uh, probably December of this year, the the Goonies type of Star Wars show called Skeleton Crew comes out. It's the uh, it's been described by the creators as a group of kids in the equivalent of the Star Wars galaxy suburbs go on an adventure. And as we speculated from the online rumors, Vane the Pirate is in that uh, trailer for Skeleton Crew. Now, strangely, Bubba, I've I've heard that the they uh, the creators have said this is a show with kids in it, but it is not a kid show. Oh, I don't know about that. I think it'll be an all ages show. That's what they but said. I bet, I bet. Well, what they're trying to say but, is it's not going to be. Yeah. I I still want to see it. I want to see how the skeleton crew skews. All right, so then that's this year for Star Wars shows. We tend to get out three a year. 2024, we're going to have The Acolyte, which has been described by the creator as Fro- the, sh- the movie Frozen meets the movie Kill Bill. Love it. What? That- <laughs> That'll be spring of 2024. Wait, Frozen with Olaf? Frozen with Olaf meets Kill Bill is how the showrunner Leslie Headland described the acolyte. Now, this is the oh, wow. most, this is going to be the setup of the show, so this isn't a spoiler. But what do you know about Frozen? The main characters in Frozen are two sisters, right? Right. One has Frozen powers. I know that it passes the Bechdel test. That's all yeah, I know okay. about Frozen. Well, yeah. the acolyte, uh-huh. some of the main characters are going to be two sisters. One may be skewing good, one skewing bad. And the okay. one is skewing so it's bad. Like wicked. Right. And the one, it would possibly, and the one skewing bad is maybe skewing bad because, wait, my sister gets accepted into the Jedi Academy and I don't. And so that feels like where it's really going with Frozen meets Kill Bill. Huh. Isn't that the way, uh, didn't that happen at the beginning of The Magicians as well? The book? Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of right. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, spoilers for the magician. We love spoiling things. And or season That's the beginning of the and book. or season two catfish. They had a, uh, a convention only trailer for mm-hmm. that, but you know that's going to be wonderful. That'll be in August of twenty twenty four, and then Mandalorian season four. They're going to film it in October of twenty twenty three. It'll probably be out December of twenty twenty four. So those are the shows, catfish. Wow. Which of those shows are you most excited about? <clears throat> Oh, well, I'm excited for a uh, skeleton crew. You know, if it's going to be, I mean, uh, a show with kids in it is fun. If yeah. It's not like, you know, a show that's like specifically just for like kids. Mm-hmm. That sounds, that, that sounds awesome, especially because for me, it's, uh, you know, I'm kind of enjoying the things that are new. Obviously, they're going to have connections to other stuff, but kind of n- new stories in this. Like I love Andor, Mandalorian, and I've 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 less enjoyed Boba Fett and Obi Wan and yeah. Obi Wan. So. I, well, I liked I've liked all of them, even Boba Fett, which the the formatting of the show and the story were kind of messed up. But that came from John Favreau, who does the Mandalorian. So you know the mess up the mess up kind of story stuff in this season maybe goes to that. But I've enjoyed them all. But I'm looking forward to most. I gotta say it, Andor season two. Oh, I mean Cyril except- and his cereal. The 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 Dedril where it's Cyril and Dedra combined as love. Um and, I, I and there's rumors yeah. they're gonna have more aliens, which was kind of my probably my only thing of like I need some a- more aliens in this show. I need like a it's a trap. <laughs> well Bubba um, I, I, I mean for me I just can't even when I when I watch a a season a, t- a television show season that is so perfect. Right. As Andor, okay, yeah, it's like I'll compare it to something. Uh, one of my favorite shows this past year was Severance on on, so on good. Apple so TV. So good, yeah. So I am not looking forward to the next season simply because I don't. I, I just can't imagine a 
that that it can live up to it just well, because Andor and call. Severance their first seasons were amazing. Yeah. I can't help but feel there'll be a letdown. So okay, but Bubba, let's talk about something else because you know what I've been reading a lot about in this last week. I'll read it, yeah. And, and 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 then the week before that is oh well, 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 this is the this is the reason why no one's watching. The Mandalorian this year. This is it's a disappointing season, and 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 because of this, and because of that, and because of this, that's why no one's watching The Mandalorian this season. So, Bubba, do you have any news on that front? So, I, I've always said all these streaming ratings you kind of take with a with a whole, huge pinch of salt. So. All these ratings, they've really, even though here we are talking about episode seven, because they're so delayed, we've really only known about the ratings for the first two episodes. And what they've said is that the first two episodes of season three of The Mandalorian, when all was said and done, they were about down 14%. Now, to me, that doesn't sound too big, but you pointed out double digits. That is a lot. So down 14% is tough. But what just came out today, we are talking about the 13th of April, is that the ratings for the third episode went up 25%, which I would I imagine would cover that 14% they were down. Sure. And so through three episodes, it's kind of, at the very least, if it's down, it's not even down 14% anymore. So, again, even this that I'm telling you, I don't think you can trust it 100%, but if people come out and say the third episode boosted the previous week's ratings by 25%, to me that's like, okay, this show's fine. This show's fine. It's doing well. It's not like a... It's not a Netflix, I'm going to cancel it if I don't get, what was it, a hundred, a hundred, hundred million, hundred million, hundred million viewing million hours in the in, first in week the first or something. first week, yeah. Yeah. So I think, well, Catfish, you know, once again, we don't really talk about it too much, but we are in the business. I am in the, my day job is very much about ratings and, and about, in some ways, the old school ratings, let me be honest, not the streaming ratings, but no, I deal with streaming too. And so... I know how these numbers get fudged, so I I don't ever take them too hard. What do you think about these ratings and this news story that came out? Well, I mean, you know, I just I, – I do find it funny that people will – because I'm not joking. I, I probably saw three or four articles oh, yeah. in the last week that were about uh-huh. – that were all the same kind of thing. And to me, it's like – uh, you know, if you think it's not as good, say it's not as good. But you know, it's it it, it just goes to show that, yeah, the the streaming ratings are just just wonky. They are. So you, you be careful before you tie a whole uh, uh, theory around yeah uh, around them. No, I agree. You know, catfish. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to talk a bit more about some more news, especially kind of how it ties to The Mandalorian. But let's save that for last. Right. You've been saying they're not going to make more movies. These movies get announced, never going to happen. That is well, true. guess what? They announced three more movies. And how many of those do you think will happen? Well, that Be is honest. a great question. Let's have, well, let's talk okay. about them. All right. So the first one up, most likely, in December of 2025. So that's, you know, not quite two years away, but pretty far away. It's going to be a sequel to the final trilogy, the sequel trilogy, and it's a sequel to that. It's about a new Jedi Order featuring Rey, Daisy Ridley, who, if you go to Star Wars Celebration like I did, these women, and maybe there are not enough female characters for women to dress up as, or little girls to dress up as, but if you saw all the women and young women dressed as Rey, you would know, yes, of course I gotta have Rey. So that's gonna be directed by Charmaine Obad-Chinoy. Now I hope I don't mispronounce that. She directed a couple episodes of Miss Marvel, and it's being written, as we talked about before, by Peaky Blinders' Stephen Knight. The next movie to come out, and it could come out in 2026 or 2027, they're kind of having a debate with this movie and Avatar 4 for 2026, and it just depends on which one gets it. I'm going to assume that Avatar 4 gets it, and that Dave Filoni is going to have a movie which is going to be kind of the culmination of this battle with Gideon and Thrawn, with the storyline of The Mandalorian, Ahsoka, The Book of Boba Fett, and Skeleton Crew. Then, in 2029, they're going to have a James Mangold, great director, who did the Logan movie, the end of the Wolverine character that so many people love, and is doing this summer's Indiana Jones movie, which Lucasfilm must have loved because they told him, hey, you can do your own Star Wars movie. And he wants to do a Star Wars biblical epic <laughs> about the first people to kind of use in the Force. Okay. You know, like really far back in time. And like, okay, let's talk about this is like a religion of the Force, that kind of stuff. Catfish, 
number one, mm -hmm. which of these are you most excited about? And number two, let's talk about the Mandalorian movie. Are people going to be okay with, hey, I've been watching all these Disney Plus shows. Now I've got to go to the theater to actually watch the conclusion. What are your thoughts on which one of these three movies excites you and or which one uh, what what do you think about? Hey, I watch all these shows now to watch the conclusion of this story. I go to the theater. You know that doesn't bother me much. As I mean, this is the you were there, and I didn't check out all the Disney news. So this is the first I'm hearing about this movie, and my first reaction is, oh my god! Now like all the Marvel movies. All these things have to tie in yep. together and depend on each other. And so they're going to be restricted in ways like The Mandalorian wasn't restricted. I mean, obviously, they're restricted because they take place in the middle of a time period that we right. know about. But but to have them all like kind of interact with each other, yeah, I'm not so happy about that. That's what I'm not happy about. Well, which one of these three are you most excited about then? Well, I think I would be the um, uh, the uh, like like I've said, I'd like completely new things. So for me, it would be the Star Wars uh, biblical epic. Even though I, I laughed at it, I you know it's something completely new. I don't I don't think I need to see anything more regarding regarding Ray. I mean, uh, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, <laughs> listeners, which of these movies are you most excited about? At Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram. Catfish, because we're a day late, we're giving people a lot of podcasts. Let's end with this. On the show, we're talking about The Mandalorian. Rick Famuyiwa, who directed this episode we just watched and discussed, episode seven of season three, this year he got kind of uh, promoted from the director's chair to an executive producer chair with John Favreau and Dave Filoni. And he had a comment about this season and the title of the show. And why don't you read it to the listeners and let's discuss it. All right. Well, he said, I think now with Bo possessing the Darksaber, I know that there was a lot of expectations that might have shifted both in terms of what it meant for Din Jaren, but also for Bo. And what does it mean? Who is the Mandalorian at this point? And so... I think it could be anyone. And I think that's what they're trying to define in many ways is what does that mean to be Mandalorian? But I really got hung up on the who is the Mandalorian at this point? I mean, the title of the show, Mandalorian, yeah. is for Din. Have you, what it's always been for Din. Yes. But what if they're trying to? The only thing that, that this comment makes me think mm -hmm. is what if they're trying to really say... Grogu is the Mandalorian. He is a foundling. We are watching him become the Mandalorian. Oh. That's my only thought. Wow. Any, in other words, it is an odd thing that he said, but, you know, it's an odd thing that he said, but I can't I can't figure out any other way into it. All right. If they're trying to say, I mean, that you, you, you know, that's compl you're completely right. But, uh, 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 yeah, Gro that Grogu is a is the foundling. He could become it, but it, it it just made me worry. Along with this season, where it's like, look, we had the 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 Mando Grogu team up, and we've gotten away from that this year. From them being front and center, and their mm -hmm. and their goals and their wants driving the story. Mm -hmm. That's exactly true. I think a lot of people love this episode, even though they're still, you know, they're supporting bo and yeah. kind of everybody else's mission. They want it, too. But you're right. It'll be interesting. This final episode, which we're going to have in just six days from now, it is going to be interesting. And it's going to see if it can put this season in a in a different light. I often, you know, my final Game of Thrones spoiler is that for season six, a lot of people had trouble with that season. But it ended with two all-time classic Game of Thrones episodes. And suddenly everybody's like, oh, season six is great. I wonder if... if if they can really stick the landing on next week and really make people say, okay, I didn't like Jack Black or I didn't like this, I didn't like that, but this did stick the landing and this is just as good as the other two. It'll be interesting to see. Holy cow, well, Bubba, we only have six more days Ooh. to wait for that. Oh, my goodness. And then we'll have a, we'll have a break. My life will be empty. <laughs> <laughs> right, you'll have free time again. What's that like? <laughs> but Bubba, yeah, this is my penultimate time of saying. No, this is my last time saying. Yes, for a while. We'll talk to you next week on Parsec Passion. 
you know, they killed me, Werner Herzog, the client, for absolutely no reason. I mean, no reason at all. He should have still been alive. Like, why did they kill the client? It made no sense. Well, uh, why? Everybody else, like, I mean, what How was do you know that the armor is at Werner Herzog okay, with a voice right, changing? Okay. Mind you later. <laughs> Edit. <laughs>